So what I want us to do is to start becoming more conscious, start choosing things in a better way for ourselves, and start creating a life that's going to gear us to really take advantage of the opportunities that are going to show up for us in the, the years to come. This podcast is brought to you by The Integrated Human. We work up, down, inside out to plug yourself into your potential. If you want to see what we are up to and what's next, sign up to our newsletter or follow us on social media. If you like what we are doing, we really appreciate it if you can like our post on social media and YouTube and help us grow. All right. Welcome to the Big and Small Podcast. I'm Jason Shield, and I'm big. And I'm Mark Gabrielsen, and I'm the tiny one. Hey, so we just got through with an amazing meditation event. It was packed, filled with good people, deep transcendence, freedom, energy, emptiness, relaxation, and good conversation. So, Marit, what did you get out of it? Sorry. <coughs> it's a little bit early in the morning. Um, like I told the people that uh, participated, um, my experience with stuff like a meditation weekend or any course for that matter, um, you often have certain expectations going in. Um, and often the... The event though, doesn't meet my expectations, but when I look back, it's exactly what I needed. Because mm. um, what I expect and what I think I need is not necessarily what I actually need. Yeah, a lot of people think they're getting a spa retreat, right? Yeah. They're going to feel like they got a massage three times a day and they did this um, amazing vacation experience, which, by the way, many people get. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, of course you can get that as, as well. Which, but again, if maybe maybe you expect it to be hard, to to be deep in in the way of of hard, and you're gonna discover something like intense stuff, and then you ended up having a vacation feeling instead. Yeah, and you have the opposite: people expecting to feel so relaxed and full of energy, and they walk out feeling exhausted. Yeah, that's it. You know, you have these. Um ideas these things that people say that i always kind of smile at people who don't train go oh you know i'm gonna start training so i can have more energy <laughs> well my friends when you start training and you haven't trained you feel like you feel like dog hammered shit. dog shit like you feel bad like you the first three weeks you feel like somebody's beating you up and you can hardly get out of bed and you feel horrible and, and people are like yo what that means you're not doing it right wrong because pain is a measure of relative change so if you have some relative change, meaning that your workouts are AKA working out, you're actually mm -hmm. getting something done and creating a change, a physiological change, you will feel it. Yeah. So, you know, you can imagine yourself as a, as a satellite, you know, flying around the planet. If you want to go to a higher orbit, you have to use energy. So the higher orbit you go, the, the, the more relative change you want to make the more energy it takes. That's just the way it is. And neurologically, physiologically, physiologically, you have to actually go through a brain rewiring, looking at things differently, connecting things in a different way. And you don't think that creates some change, some need for energy? Of course it does. And I think a lot of us are, are stuck in a world where we don't sit down. And of, uh, we sit way too much. But we sit doing stuff. We, we watch TV, we're on Instagram and Facebook, we work, we do something all the time. We, we're constantly entertained. Um, so the fact that we're going to sit and meditate, and we had a lot of very good meditation. We had everything from two minutes to 20 minutes. Yeah. We had a bunch of different, you had uh, spaced repetitions yeah. um, in the meditation. But it's very hard when you are constantly used to being on your phone constantly that something is happening to entertain you all the time and entertainment can can be the news because it just pulls you out of yourself mm. and then you have to sit or not have to but you're going to sit and and everything's going to be quiet that's extremely difficult because in this this one we didn't 
Um, we had one guided meditation. The other ones were uh, moksha meditation, focusing on the breath. And we didn't. Ha- we didn't on purpose. We didn't use music and stuff. So you didn't have anything mm. that that head of yours didn't have anything to catch up to or, or kind of cling to. Yeah. Which it normally has, being news, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Mm. And I think that's that's a reality check for many. Um, like I said, it takes some energy uh, to do this kind of stuff, mm. and you need it. Yeah, absolutely. You need it. And and the, the thing is, is that in the integrated human, we're not trying to transform you from a person who functions in your everyday life and, you know, has your kids and your work and you're, you know, getting the gold medal or whatever, you know, being a performance person to a person who sits in a cave somewhere in the Himalaya mountains and doesn't interact at all, right? We're not talking about transform you into a person who just ignores their life what we're doing is we're actually making you a more effective you so everybody there when i i ask so who hears for performance everybody raised their hand and this was held in our our training facility where you just see bunches and bunches of gold medals everywhere because our life mtg myself it's about achievement on the outside and total being on the inside. It's about integrating the outside and the inside worlds as well. It's about going all the way in the spiritual or all the way in the material and combining them. That's it. So you get balance there. You get balance and power. Because when your inside is aligned, then your action on the outside is efficient and effective and well-aimed. That's the whole point. It's this idea from the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna was talking to Arjuna on the battlefield, you know, you pull back the, that that the arrow, right? And you aim it and you let it go and you just let that thing fly, right? And that's, your, that's you shooting yourself out of the bow. That's like a metaphor because your actions become so sharp and so directed. And that's what this meditation was about. It wasn't about who could sit longest because I guarantee you I can sit longer than you because I've done it. Yeah, I, I no yeah. question. And there's there is some use in that in relationship to can I? But once you've done a certain amount, it's like okay, now where's your integration into your action? Where's your proof of purchase? You know, where is it that you actually can show people that you've accomplished something instead of just isolating yourself from the world? Yeah. Right. So um, another kind of person that you see often in meditation events are people that are super high. Mm. So picture this, friends. You're driving in a hot rod. What's a hot rod? A hot rod. Hot rod's like, uh, I don't know, like think about one of those 1980s super uh, modified American muscle cars. Ah, yes. You know, Fast and Furious? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's where that comes from. Or Gone in 60 Seconds, the Shelby. Gone in 60, that's what I'm talking about. That's a hot rod. A Shelby's a hot rod. You know, and when you think you have a badass car, pull up next to a Shelby and try to to do a a, 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 a rev a room, off a room room a room room. That's it's, it's crazy, this. right? That's a hot rod. Okay. So you just you know stole money from the bank or whatever you think your trauma is. You got away with something. You didn't get away with something. You don't want to look at something. Whatever it is, I don't care. You're in your hot rod and you're going fast. If you go fast enough, you're so worried about running into something that you forget that the cops are on your cha- on your tail. Hmm. Do you understand? So some people get so hyper and manic and high because they just have to do more and more and more and more because then they don't have to look at what's behind them. What's behind them. Chasing and them. What's what chasing they're, them. What yeah. they're running from. The hellhounds on your trail, right? And as soon as they have a moment where they stop and meditate, then all the cops catch up. And that's also a very interesting thing. Because many times they think the cops are going to throw them in the slammer when the cops are just wanting to say hello or they just want to give them a, a, a tiny fine or whatever. But them running from the cops make that, you know, evading the police, <laughs> which they, that gets them thrown into jail. Because when you get enough cops chasing you, you get enough unanswered stuff inside you, then when the cops catch you, it becomes an issue. So that's another 
thing that sometimes happens during the meditation events, people have to be brave enough to maybe meet themselves. Most people in the presence of a person who has gamma wave activity and they meditate will have some interchange, meaning that things will come up and they have to look at it. But that gamma wave is also very stabilizing. And gamma wave, I'm talking about the different wavelengths that people produce when they meditate. And people who have been meditating a long time get often very deep theta waves, which is something like what you have when you're a child or when you're under hypnosis. But gamma waves are something that happens to you if you've been a very strong meditator for many years. And we had very strong meditation vibration in the in the uh, the place we were holding this. Maudit was there, myself was there. We were there uh, with a lot of people who do a lot of inner work. It was a very strong atmosphere. It was really nice also with the, with the uh, aspect of people that were there. You have uh, all range. You have uh, a lot of men and female. You had uh, between 24 to, to 50, I think. Um, so, so, and with every everybody had different or different phases in their lives, which I think was very very nice. Mm. It's not kind of one type of people. No, and everybody yeah. had some kind of breakthrough uh, in terms of contacting themselves, transcendence, learning techniques, learning how to take these very performance oriented techniques into their everyday life. You know, there were strategies uh, given. There were philosophies and understandings given there were reflection given there was meditation technique given there was breath control given there's a lot of things that were given there that people were taking and, and using for themselves because it's not about me or Maudit making you necessarily us it's it's helping us it's us helping you perform as you perform as the best you and not making you quote unquote a better person making you a more efficient you so that you can figure out who you want to be, how you want to be. Mm. Mm. So it was, it was, uh, it was cool. Yeah. I was really happy with it. And we have set up a new one now. Yep. The 28th to 29th of May. Yep. Um, it's no live. So mm -hmm. people can buy tickets. Yeah, and they have, many it. have. Many have so already. Um, so if you are interested and want to join, you should buy it soon because there are limited spots. Mm -hmm. Um, and that weekend we're going to look more on, um, what we worked on now, but you don't don't have to be on this one to come to the next one. No. Uh, and we're going to no. look at uh, um, meditations in different form, in uh, physical forms, in yep. the way of sitting, standing, laying down, and walking meditations. Yes. So um, very nice if uh, we get a full course there as well, which I expect we will have. And um, hopefully we'll have nice weather. Yeah, uh, so hopefully. Walking, it's in walking. May. It's, it's like in it's May. Nice it's nice to walk in the rain, May. but if there's a storm, you know, we may have to find somewhere else to walk. Well, then we can walk in circles. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> Be like Sufis. Well, the spot doesn't matter, does it? Mm -mm, and so, it. Um, And inside. then you get to practice meditating in rain, which mm. also is good because we focus too much on the weather. Anyways. Yeah, that's true. Um, so that's that's live now, mm -hmm. and you can find it in integrated-human.com. Yep. Um. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. Me too. One of the interesting things with uh, having a reflective uh, mindset is, you know, I, I had the view over the over the hall of people, and I had people raise their hands because the more you participate in your life, the better results you get. True or not true? True. That's it. So if you're not participating, then you just might as well pull out and do something else because it's not for you. You want something that engages you. So I had people raise their hand and I would ask questions. I'm like, who here has ever been proud of their kids? Because many of the, we had actually families there. Yeah, right? it was really nice. We have uh, husbands and, and wives and we had uh, mothers, mothers and, and daughters children. and mothers and sons. Yeah. It's exactly. quite cool that you get the generation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you, you know, you, you look at, society and everything always has to be good and better and amazing right good better and amazing those are great words good better and amazing so i ask who here has, has ever been in a situation where they were proud of their kids and everybody raised their hand they're like oh ooh, ooh, me 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 i'm very proud of my kid right and i'm like okay who here has ever been ashamed of their kid and then everybody froze <laughs> you know 
And they're like, oh. And I'm like, okay. And of course, nobody wanted to raise their hand because their kid's sitting right next to them or right behind them or whatever. And the kid's looking at mom like, are you ashamed of me? Have you been ever ashamed of have me? Have you ever? Like, come on. Or And then they know they have because they've been ashamed of themselves. Yeah, so yeah. So they're more like, are you daring to say it? Yeah. Are you, are you daring? And, you know, the whole point is that, now this is a very important thing if you guys can kind of conceptualize this, okay? Integrated human talks about being a total human being. You are high and low, light and dark, good and bad, and all those things inside, you have all of them. And if you don't acknowledge all of the, it doesn't mean that you have to live in your sorrow or live in your bad attitude or live in your bad behavior or try to make people ashamed of you. That's not what I'm talking about. But you have to acknowledge the fact that you have all of those things and that you are those things for everybody, meaning that you are one of those things for somebody. Somebody's watched you do something clumsy and been ashamed because they themselves don't own their own clumsiness. And they get ashamed that, oh my God, I can't watch this on TV. Uh, 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 you know, Or they see something violent and they're like, oh, that's not me at all. That's not me at all. Listen, if you ever criticize somebody unfairly, that's violence. It doesn't have to be hitting someone in the face. It doesn't have to be hitting. And if it is hitting somebody in the face, that's not better or worse. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. That's just what happened. Do you understand? So the point is, is that at the end of the week, and weirdly enough, weirdly enough, we got to a point where people could accept themselves in all of their phases and accept their kids in all of their phases. So if you're a parent out there and you've ever been ashamed of your kid, raise your hand. Of course you're going to raise your hand. Of course, because they're unfinished human beings and they're going to do things that are clumsy and strange and weird. And, you know, I, I remember being in a, in a party and there was this like four-year-old running around just grabbing everybody's crotch. And that is a normal freudian phase of people's personality and you're gonna tell me that you're not a little bit ashamed of little johnny who's grabbing everybody's junk of course you are you should <laughs> be but but what are you gonna do you know it's like okay you could stop john you have to you have to correct the behavior so that he is he has social normalization but you're gonna have some kind of internal reaction there now if you haven't owned your own clumsiness and your own unfinishedness and your own not knowing and doing ridiculous stuff you're going to moralize that over him and you're going to be horribly ashamed and horribly oh my god and it's going to make probably a trauma for little johnny but if you've owned your own stuff and realize that okay probably when i was his age i was grabbing people's junks too i probably need to calm down and just say okay little johnny this is what we do that hurts that hurts don't hurt don't hurt uncle joe don't hurt aunt Susie. That hurts when you do that, and it's not funny. So please don't do that. And you may have to remind him a couple times, and then you're done with it. But is there a little bit of shame that comes up? Even if you have owned your own thing, yes, but it reintegrates into love instantly. You see, that's the whole point. The whole point is that the things that you have not acknowledged inside yourself are the things that traumatize you and fuck you up on the outside world. I'm going to say that one more time. The things inside you that you have not owned, meaning that, yes, I have done something stupid. There's something I've regretted in my past. Yes, there's something that I could have, I wish I could have done better. You know, there's something that I, I could have said when I didn't say it. I could have shown up when I didn't show up. There's always something that you could have done differently or in your head you thought you could. And I'm just going to say, if that triggered you, Bingo. <laughs> yeah, then you know there's something you have like, owned I inside I bet you. half of you guys are going to go, fuck that. Fuck what it's saying. That's not true. Well, mm. there you go. That's it. And the whole point is, is that when you meditate, things will come up and you are uh, able to integrate them. You're able to work them into your understanding of love, your understanding of presence, your understanding of okayness. Okay, if you don't, if if you're a big badass dude with tats on your neck and you don't want to hear the word love, that's okay, bro. You can just say acceptance. I can accept that. It's not gonna throw me off my base. Uh uh, I'm good. Right? It's a gangster way of saying love. Yeah, that's a gangster way of saying love. So, my friends, integrating yourself. So, meditating gives you the peace, silence, and focus, so that you can then reflect on what's going on on the inside. And then once you've integrated those things and become comfortable with them, then you become a performance human being. 
if you haven't integrated them, you will work against yourself. So everybody's like, yeah, but they ganged up on me. They ganged up on me. It was like five five against one. That's why they won that fight. Otherwise, I would have put the beast mode button in, 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 in function and I would have wrecked them. Well, what if it's a one-on-one fight, my friends, but you have five different things inside you that are fighting you? So don't you want to be on your own side? Don't you want to make sure that you're activating all of your engines and that you're actually performing in a way that makes you proud and and at least not getting in your own way? Should. Should. So this whole process of meditation and integration, of course, is useful for performance. And that's why Navy SEAL snipers use it. That's why uh, top CEOs use it. That's why me and MTG over here use it. Everybody uses it that wants to get the most out of themselves. Because you've been a performance person for your whole life, Monet. How many times in your life have you come to a, a point in a fight or in a in a thing and you were your own worst enemy oh every time every single time i will be good so far that i say that no one has beat me i've only beaten myself that's it and that's that sucks well it's amazing because it's very true it just sucks balls yeah it's 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 horrible it's not easy i'm very tired of it well (laughs) that's the whole process of becoming a finished human being though right because you because and that's so it's said on the outside because they're like haven't you been beaten by others? Yes, I have. Of course, that's, I've been trying. I in you do jujitsu. I've been triangle choked a hundred out of a hundred times, but um, every time that happened, I was doing five percent or forty percent of what I was capable of. That's it. So it's um, you're giving your opponent an easy an easy target. Because you were only activating a small portion of yourself because you couldn't because you had to be nice or you had to. I was actually looking at a picture this morning mm. from four years ago. Uh, they came up, you know, you have your Facebook stories and memories pops up. And it's a nice picture. Uh, it's from a seminar. And I could only think was, wow. At that point, I cared so much about what I was representing and not representing me in just being, but what I was representing in the way I was dressing or what clothes I wore or what I was doing. Mm. It was quite interesting Mm. to look at. And it was really nice. I didn't look at it with judgment. I didn't say, oh, I was a bad person then because then I cared about, I don't know, eyelashes or, or, or stuff like that. Um, I still call them my eyebrows, but that mm-hmm. has to do with I actually get a facial expressions. <laughs> but I don't, I don't care for uh, which I like. I like having more facial expressions, but that when I did it before and I had like you know these fake eyelashes and stuff, I did it because I I wanted to look a certain way or wanted to be represented a certain way or mm. wanted to carry myself a certain way or was some. It wasn't me. I didn't. That wasn't me. Yeah. Because it wasn't strong enough to not have it. Mm, following something that was socially expected or socially acceptable or socially uh, rewarded, but you really didn't feel like you resonated with that. No, I I was find a, I have issue finding right words lately, but it's it's. I looked at it and look, they looked at this picture and I. I I was making myself extremely small yeah. with, while bit doing it. Mm. And I'm not saying it's wrong to have fake eyelashes or fillers or whatever. You do you do whatever you want. No, you do you. That's Fine. the point. But for me that was I it made me feel good. But when I now look back doing the work I've I've have done and doing it's I understand that it felt good, but I don't need that anymore. No, that's it. But also, I'm not feeling... I'm very happy and, and proud that I don't feel judgment for who I was four years ago. Mm-hmm. And the same when I look at, at baby pictures, or not baby pictures, because then you baby, like, you don't have anything in you yet. You're, you're mush. Yeah. But, you know, when you're, <laughs> you're, you're kinder, kindergarten age, yeah, I have a, a lot of love for that girl that's on that picture. Yeah. I think she's fucking amazing. I was a very awesome 
kindergarten kid. Yeah, you're if still a very awesome kid. I was a, well, especially in kindergarten, I think it was the nah. bomb. No one can dispute that. <laughs> <laughs> but but I I I also have a lot of that kid is also struggling with stuff, knowing or not knowing. Um, and it's really nice to be able to look back in those pictures and and uh, not judge, but have love for myself at that point. Yeah, and love that and is, understanding. And that is something I couldn't have done some years ago. Then I would have judged, oh, I did that then, I don't do that now. and Or I didn't wouldn't even say that I did it. I was just like, Ugh, that's yeah. a piece of shit. Or yeah. push that away or mm. diminish who that person were. Mm-hmm. Um, which is awful. Well, that that's part of fragmentation, right? It's fragmentation because, you know, you, the person that you were before gave you who you are now. And I'm very grateful. Yeah, but it's very hard to accept and love that. Yeah, it, in, in a certain, at a certain point it is, you know, it's like, but when you look back at your kid pictures, they're amazing. You're so oh, fun. I was so happy then. You're so fun and, and, and uh, you know, you're an awesome kid and you're an awesome human being. But how many I would look back, especially in the age, if you look, if you find like pictures between, say, 12 to 23. Yeah, there's a lot of trying to find your identity, man. It's a it's, lot of awkwardness. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, not only are you, you, you growing like the, the, the gangle legs and the weird, the weird face. Because everything's growing at different speeds, and I was, you're going at through one puberty. Point I was sixty-eight kilos, and not the kilos matter, but I was so big. Yeah, you and were. Now I'm, I'm. I like I was I was so unfinished. So <laughs> like unfinished, I said, yeah, like yeah. I saying, you kind of have the face when you are a baby, where you kind of you're not just mush. Well, you have that face in puberty as well. Yeah, <laughs> or you just mush. Yeah, exactly. It's just a lot of stuff. Stuff is waiting to happen. It's nothing's happened, but it's waiting to happen, right? Yeah, it's waiting to happen. Yeah, and you know, we all had our our, our like I used to call it the Twizzler phase and the and the grape phase. The grape phase is like you're, you're putting on weight before you start to grow, and then you get the Twizzler phase where you start to to grow upwards and things aren't filling out yet. Then and you're just yeah. dangly, dangly. Yeah, it's so like funny. a lot of legs. Yeah, a lot of legs and hands. Boys have a lot of more of that because they often get taller. Mm. where they are very much legs. Yeah. Or they have, uh, remember uh, a guy I know, he had, his arms were so long. Yeah. But then he, his body was not growing yet. <laughs> yeah, so it's so like amazing. his, you know, you have this ratio thing between your arms and, and hip and or knee or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, but yeah. kind of his arms reach past his knees. Like far like past his knees. Long <laughs> past his knees. But, so his arms had grown out, but his body hadn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's his spine like, hasn't started yet. That's kind of fun. <laughs> it is, it is. To look at. It's not fun for him, I would imagine. Or I don't even know if he was aware. No, probably not. No, that's probably the, not. That's a great thing. But when know? you look back at the pictures, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of fun things, you know. But looking back and thinking that all the good things in your life came from that process. And it's a, it's not about never having done something wrong or not being something ridiculous or whatever. Because, that again, that's part of... Growing up, it's part of finding the identity. You have to try stuff. If you don't try stuff, you your whole life you're ignoring a piece of yourself. You try something, and you go, "Oh, okay, that's what that is. That's not for me." You know, "Oh, that's who I was then." Oh, that's not for me. You know, it's it's uh, it's wonderful, and having been there, and having seen the consequences of a certain way of being or a certain focus or whatever, you can appreciate that and love yourself for that. And I think it's it's awesome. What a what a great thing, Mara. That's that's cool. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Yeah, and that's the process of becoming self aware, self aware through meditation, through awareness, through your personal process, mm. and it's all about you know finding your path. You know, it's extremely important. Yeah, it is. It's gonna bite you in the ass, anyways. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. The cops will catch you sooner or later because they're, you know, there are more of them. So you can drive your hot rod all you want, my friends. At some point, you're going to have to settle down and actually meet the cop and shake their hand and figure out whether they just want to give you a small citation or they want to throw you in the slammer. And I recommend doing that consciously instead of it just all of a sudden you're in jail and you don't understand why. Exactly. Because then your outside world is most likely pretty wrecked. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hence getting 
a way too expensive car or new new wife or new man or mm. Mm. selling everything you have and going to India. Going to India. And getting another name. Getting another name. You gotta get a guru to give you a name. Come on now. If you haven't done that, you haven't lived. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> if you want to know these stories, you should go and come to the next meditation event. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so no, so I'm very, very happy with it. I'm I'm very happy with the what people got out of it, and it's so interesting because I got something totally different out of it than than the person next to me, which is very interesting. Mm. Um, so it's very personal, individual. Individual. Yeah. What were some um, of the things you heard? Um, no, it's it's how deep people went, what they saw, how they saw it. Um, I could, for instance, the 15 minutes one was the one that was deepest for me, but the next person next to me was kind of not feeling it at all, but the one in five minutes kind of pulled them out for a week. You know, it's... um, No, it's very interesting. Very fun. Mm. Um, um, I'm really proud of the work people were doing. Yeah, me too. Over the, over the, the weekend. Yeah. So the continuation is going to be very, very good. It's going to be amazing. Super fun. Super fun. Well, we had a subject. (laughs) That was not this subject. Mm. Um, Because we were... And you actually mentioned that uh, when we talked about the meditation now, the meditation event, that our goal is not to make you a copy of us. Mm. Please don't. Mm. I don't want to be a copy of anyone, and uh, I don't want you to have copies of me. Mm. I, it's more than enough. World has more than enough with one Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion, one. But um, fantastic, super performing yes. modern philosopher MDG. Yes, that's more than enough with one. But um, we had the. It is called in English. It's called Women International Day. No? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and we had this conversation. A long time ago, because we were thinking about, you know, it's a lot of, uh, I think we brought it up with the Black Lives Matters thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Because when you talk about race, you talk about politics, you talk about religion, you talk about gender, it's very... um, Very loaded. Very loaded. It's a lot of anger. Yeah. It's a lot of history. Mm -hmm. And um, we we had an issue with this, because we agreed on the... Things are being said, but at the same time, we, we haven't. Because we feel it's such a, a polarization, such a war. And one of the other podcasts we talked about, polarization is needed for many, many reasons. But we're not the same. Mm-mm. And, men men it, and w- women are not the same. Yeah, and the we re- talked about the, was yeah. it in Norwegian it's called like stilling? What's, how can yeah, you transfer uh, that? Equal, um, well, in, in English, they say equal rights. But um, in Norwegian, if you translate it, it becomes like making people equal, making yeah. them the same in a way. Making, making them, them the e- same. Making them same. And, and then we had this interesting uh, conversation where we, we said, we, me and you are more alike than me than my sis- sister or any female out there. Yeah, yeah, because we work in the same place. We think the, the same things. Well, we, we wake we up do, the same time. Yes. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. We drink coffee at the same time. Yep. We eat the same breakfast. It's yes. four eggs. Yep. We eat lunch, which is yeah. a salad in the office. Yep. We train during lunch. We train yeah. the same things. Yeah. We're working in. Like our schedule are copy yeah. paste almost. Yeah, almost. And what we eat are almost the same. Yeah. Because we hang out a lot. Yeah. That's and it. we have a, same, a lot of patterns. The, most, the biggest difference between us is gender. Yeah, I would say that's it. The, the, uh, the, the only the, the only contrast, and I'm 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 big, and you're small. That's it. That's but, it. But but I, my I'm much more alike. If you had taken a female out in Wangen here, this the city centrum, yeah. and take her into the office, and we're gonna see how alike and, we were. And you compare notes. And you compare notes. How does your life look? I'm not like them at all. Most no. likely, no. No. And everyone attested, no, nah, my life's not like your life at all. We have different priorities. Yep. We eat differently. Mm-hmm. We schedule our life differently. Everything's, we think differently. Yes. Everything's different. Yeah. But we, we hook up that we have the same gender. You're female, yeah. I'm female. Yeah. And you may be blonde and I may be blonde, but after that, 
things not matching up anymore. Well, if I look at you, it's kind of the outside that's different. Yeah, I have a beard. I, I don't. <laughs> she thank doesn't. God. Thank God. If you have, it's fine. Yeah, but I think if I, you're out there, her <laughs> husband, please, you know, she still hasn't gotten the beard yet. No, he's still waiting for that to come. I don't yeah. have that much testosterone. Neither does he, by the way. Anyways, so I'm much more alike you than my female sisters out there. Yeah. And I'm like, but I'm not, we're not the same. No, no, that's it. And you can, and, and that's when we got to the point where in Norwegian, we turned the word from making people equal, meaning the same, to making them of equal value. That your values are, are good and appropriate and should be respected in a forum. So you have human value. You Just because you are human, you are valuable. Yes. And we are that we have the same worth. We are, as human beings, worth the same, but we're not the same. We're not the same. You know, you, you, you know, a lady was like, yeah, but what about brain surgeons? They're, they're worth more than most people. And I said, well, let's, let's talk about this. Think about this for a moment. Who does more for public health? Who saves people health more, a brain surgeon or the people who collect garbage? The people that collect garbage. Yeah, man. They save your life, your health, your kids' health every single day. Have you, it's, I've, um, remember it was the big mafia down in Italy somewhere, and they just shut down the garbage. Yeah, Napoli. Napoli. And they just, like, filled the highways with trash. It's, people you get just so much rats and sickness. Oh, illness and everything. It's just insane infections. It's like the, the healthcare industry just could not take the, the pressure. And they also wondered why they got hit more with COVID than anybody else. They live in multi-generational houses. And plus, mm. you know, I, I love you, Italy. I live there. You know, it's a different it's a different society. But down in Napoli, man, there was trash everywhere. Right? So garbage, garbage collectors are, are amazing human beings. And they should be valued very highly. And it's actually a dangerous job because when they're picking up trash, they get cut, they get, you know, they all kinds of stuff, all the things that you don't want to look at, don't want to deal with, they deal with. And then you have a brain surgeon and that is a very specialized job and it takes years and years to become a brain surgeon. And when you need a brain surgeon, don't call the garbage man, call the brain surgeon. Now, that being said, you can make an argument then, well, they should be paid the same then. That's not the case because... There is also a certain qualification to become a brain surgeon. You have to go through so much and you have to postpone getting paid for so many years and work like a slave for so many years in a system that maybe in the end you get paid a, a great wage. So in, in Norway, if you look at the, the, the life wages of a medical doctor and the life wages of a carpenter, they're actually the same because the carpenter in Norway actually starts getting paid when they're 16, 17, 18. Whereas a medical doctor or a chiropractor doesn't start getting paid until they're 25. So that's like... Or more. Or more. And then you have to build a practice. And then you have to... And you know, there's so many things that you have to do in order to start getting paid that the fact that you have a higher wage each year after you start getting paid never compensates for the money, actually, that you would have made before. It has so, to do with what you prioritize. Yes, and that's the thing, the difference in the way you use your money. Because when you start using money as an 18-year-old, you create habits of an 18-year-old and you usually continue having those you habits the rest of your life. You can ask yourself the question, is if, if, I, I don't know this, I would imagine. If you put a bunch of people that had that made money from were 16 and you look at their credit card debt and you look at people that didn't, that studied and didn't get to start working until it was 30, and you look at their credit card debt when they're 40, who will have more debt? Yeah, exactly. The people who have uh, have had to postpone gratification longest are the people who have more control over impulses, which means that they will use less money on shit. That's just what it is, because they didn't have any money to, to buy shit. And if this is tri tr triggering you, please come to the next meditation event. Yeah, if this <laughs> triggers you, then you need to look at yourself and look at your economy and come to the meditation event. Yeah. But it's the, um, and I think that's such a, and I'm, I, I think, um, going back to the International Woman Day, I think it's still a lot of work to be done, um, especially when it comes to violence 
um, mm -hmm. and women's health. That yes. I think it's especially women's health. Yeah, it's. I think especially it's many, many, many ways. It's unfair that. Well, it's not unfair. It's that that's the, that's the issue with this conversation is that oh we, sh we have something that's called women's health, and not men's health. Wrong. Wrong. You know, yeah, but <laughs> they know more about the prostate than they know about the uterus. They don't even know. Actually, they can start a birth, but they don't know what triggers that natural process in the body because they know the hormones that happen after the body's been triggered. But what is it that actually says, okay, now the baby needs to be born? We don't even know that, guys. We know nothing. We know nothing about women's cycles and the hormones. And well, we can we go can't to predict. Mars. Yeah, we can go to Mars. We can send, we can send a, a, a telescope out in space so that we can you know, send our cat videos to Mars. <laughs> mm -hmm. But for some weird reason, we don't know anything about the real fluctuations and nuanced fluctuations that female athletes need to deal with when their menstruation comes, for example, and when it goes away and when they're ovulating and all that. And you're like, oh my God, what do you mean? You have no idea how little we know. No, it's it's insane. And I think the, these are things that we have to start focusing on. Um, and... But I also want to be have to be nuanced enough to not get too angry, and accept like I said, you go look back and look at the picture of Marit uh, when she was twenty five and when she was eight. I have to understand the history, yeah. and I can't. How much energy am I going to use being angry that we don't know this? Yeah. Or can I turn that into start putting focus on it instead? Yeah. Put focus and because fix. I can't change history. No. I, I can't change that we had slaves when no. in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. Nice, good history teacher. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I I can't change that for generations. Um, women have getting not, le gotten less paid. I can't yeah. change that. Well, not 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 been given education. Not given opportunity I, to take high paid positions. Not. But at the same time, I need to yeah. understand the society at that time yeah it's it. it's have you everybody uh, not everybody many of us watched Mad Men like first season amazing mm -hmm. good but it's different times you know and yeah. and we have to acknowledge the fact that it's we have a history that but we have to not get even we just have to evolve now yeah and also see the fact that there's there's a presupposition in society and this is very important and the presupposition is that women should have children. So my now this is a weird question and a very interesting question. And to, to illustrate this, Marit, you are now over 30. Yeah. And you are a high performance human being. Yeah. You perform in the office, you perform in your private life, you perform in sports. Yeah. Yeah. So do have people ever wonder when you're gonna have kids? Uh, all the time. Now, who actually is putting more pressure on you to have kids? And park your career, park your, your ambitions. More females or men? Females. Uh huh. Not a okay. single man. Not just a so single that's man. Not, not a, a single man has ever commented on it. Well, where's the white male hierarchy in this situation? Uh -huh. You see, that's the whole point. The whole point is that it's so complicated that don't bother yourself getting pissed off about it. Just start to fix it. Live your life, be the best you, and demand the things that you need to be you. And be you, not not like this, because this is the point with the whole being the same or just having same or not just. But instead of be, we're gonna be the same, don't copy paste yourself. I don't want to be a man. No, a man shouldn't be like me. You would be a crappy man. I would actually. be a very crappy man. I'd be a very crappy woman. Yeah, yeah, I you would. would. Don't I'm we not have cute to in heels, stop guys. <laughs> making ourselves the same? Because we're not. But yeah. you have to. That we have to understand we have value. Everybody has value. Yeah. Not the same. And we're not the same. Yeah. If we're going to make everybody the same, we're taking away what's special with everybody, everything in us. Yeah, that's we're it. We're making copies. We're making clones. We don't become clones. Yeah, that's it. And meditation allows you to free yourself from the bullshit enough to reflect enough to free yourself up. And that's what happened this weekend. Many people freed themselves. In the end, I asked, okay, who here is proud of their kids? Raise their hand. Who here has ever been ashamed of their kids? And then Everybody the mother raised raised their hand. Everybody raised their hand. And the kids didn't react in a, oh my God. They kind of accepted that. And they yeah, gave their mom a hug and said, thank you. Because it's like, you know what? That means that 
the mom accepts them even though they did something dumb or weird or whatever, mm-hmm. which moms usually do. But the kids don't know that. The kids, you know, only see the moralizing side of their parents very often. And it takes them a lot of personal evolution to find that place where they can actually love themselves because they felt they weren't loved and accepted by their parents. Do you understand? That's how important this is. The relationship between you and your parents, you're like, well, I'm okay and I had a shitty, shitty mom or dad or whatever, you know. Yeah, but I guarantee you, your trauma, your inner pain, your your puzzle to solve inside yourself comes very often from the relationship that you had with your mom or dad. Mm. Either because they loved you so much, they smothered you, and then when you came out of the real world, you got smacked. Or that they weren't showing you love in a way that you could understand it and you only felt their moralization and therefore feel separated from society. So those are things that that come up and those are things that are often healed just with easy meditation. It's pretty cool. Mm -mm. So. Yeah. I want to dedicate this podcast about meditation and equal rights to Donda Wallace Poole, who passed away five years ago on this day. A woman who stopped prison riots, saved children and broke cults, was the first woman to be on the Congress floor and negotiate for women's rights and family rights who saved families from a system that didn't work saved children from families that didn't work who showed up for me in my life saved immigrants and was a powerhouse and my hero thank you so remember you matter Unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light squared, then you're energy. But if you can't be energy, matter. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We hope you felt we added something to your day and hopefully your life. If you want to learn more, subscribe to our newsletter and find us at integrated-human.com. That is integrated-human.com. Integrated Human on YouTube and other social media platforms. Have a great day and thank you again for listening. Love, light and upgrade from us at the Integrated Human team.